Hey, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Writer's Bookshelf. So today we're going to be doing another character book and this is an interesting one because it's not about the protagonist, it's about the villain. And if you know anything about villains, you'll know that villains are bad dudes and the way to make them a bad dude will actually, you know, comes down to making them a good dude, but not like a good moral dude, but a good to read dude, if that makes sense. So. We're going to be uh, covering a book that will focus entirely on villains. And if you remember a couple weeks ago, I did a book called um, Creative, Creating Characters. Uh, one of the authors who um, has contributed to that book, those chapters she contributed has come from this book. So the book we're looking at today is a reference to the one we did a couple weeks ago. So you will probably get, um, if you get both books, you will have um, not just some overlap, you will have actual overlap of, of content. Uh, but that's good because, you know, you... It doesn't hurt to read things twice. So, um, so our book today is this one, and because it's my channel is PG, I will not be saying the title out loud. You can see it for yourself what it's called. Um, but it's one that uh, I definitely think you need to own. And sorry, my my ankle is itching. I had to scratch it. Um, it's one where I think you should pick this up. Um, I believe it's. Um, I don't think it's on the shelf anymore. I think you have to order it online. It came out, uh, I think, in 2012. Or no, no, it's older than that. It's, uh, I think, 2008. 2008. So it's a fairly old book by now, but it's uh, there aren't many books like it on the market right now. So if you struggle with creating villains in particular, and not just villains, but it's like anti-heroes, um, you know, the Snake Plissken types, um, if, if that's your, your game, if you're writing somebody, um, or even something like from The Walking Dead, where, you know, your characters are um, really interesting because of how they handle uh, situations, because they take no prisoners, because they're no holds barred, if they're, um, if they're just, you know, the kinds of people that you wish you could be like because they, uh, they throw caution to the wind. Um, uh, Jack Reacher, you know, I cover, I, I talk about Lee Child a lot on this channel. Um, Jack Reacher would be one of those types of characters. In fact, I think they reference him in the book. Um, someone who just has it together but is interesting, compelling, and all that. This book covers all of that. So, um, in particular, the sections that it follows are, um, there's no parts, it's just all chapters. But it's, um, you have the unforgettable character, actually it starts with Primal Fears. Uh, it has the unforgettable the uh, case of the unlikable protagonist. So this is where you have a protagonist that, um, I know Chuck Palinchunk has a few of these, but it's the character where you shouldn't like them because they're vile in some way, like um, La Miz, I think, has got a character like that. Um, Lolita definitely has one like that. Um, there's a few others, but uh, they're, you're not supposed to like them. They're not designed to be liked, but you still read them because they're interesting. And then, so it'll talk about how to make an unlikable character interesting enough that you still want to read them about them. Um, uh, if you've ever seen uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, you have, um, so chapter three is anti -heroes. It's got the word I won't repeat on my channel, even though I'll write it in my book. Um, but I can't say it on the channel because I do want to keep this clean. Uh, but it's about anti-heroes, and then you have the dark heroes and bad boys, um, the antagonists, the bullies and mischief makers, um, the bad to the bone villains. So those are the ones where, you know, they're not muwaha or however you pronounce it, but these are the ones with motivations. Um, these are the ones that are actual doppel, um, not doppelganger, they're actual adversaries to the protagonist because they have a point of view that's in conflict with the, the main hero. Um, the sociopaths, ice in their veins. So my um, character, or my uh, book, the computer nerds, got one of those. Um, this is where you have people who really have psychological issues, and uh, the fiction is driven by their inability to empathize. You have matching wits, heroes versus villains. So that's an interesting section where you actually get to to put your hero and villain in the same room and, and see, um, and it, not necessarily literally in the same room, but like the the concepts of putting the, the heroic agenda against the villainous agenda. Um, it might show how to do that. But um, but it's a, an interesting way of, of um, showing the, the live wire in your in your fiction. Uh, Sympathy for the Devil, that's where you, um, you have a character like the Joker who um, you understand what their motivation is, even though you're not supposed to agree with it, but you, under, you, can, you can get why they do what they do. Um, although the Joker doesn't really have that 
in his character. That'd be more like um, Hans Gruber from Die Hard. Um, you know why he's doing it. Um, you know, but it doesn't make it right. You just, but you get it. Um, the Dangerous Women, again, a, a word that's on the front cover, but I will not repeat. Um, Monsters, Creatures, and Lost Souls. So this is where we get into, like, the, um, the people like uh, Nostradamus and... Um, the, the, it can be the heroes that are um, outcasts like Shrek um, but still work as a compelling hero um, and I think it also covers you know like Jaws and although I don't know if they talk about Jaws but I think it covers um, yeah it covers the monsters um, and we're get, gonna get into all that in a minute and then you have um, the bad guys for younger readers so if you're writing teen fiction or even children's fiction it, uh, there's a, the final chapter tells you how to create a bad guy for the, the children's or the young young adult market that's still tasteful that's not going to elevate the book to adult level um, but still work as a as a um, villainous thing so the style of the book is you have it's kind of a it's an older style you got the drop cap in there or the you know the uh, the headers that, that are nice and thick you got good quotes at the top um, and then each section, let's see here, each section is basically accessible. I mean, she really does a good job covering the, the basics of, of that particular section. Um, if you want to know how your anti-hero can still be empathetic um, while still having the traits of an anti-hero, I mean, this book will cover that. Um, so you have things like, okay, the likable versus unlikable protagonist. So you have the bullet point section that shows you how to tell the difference. So uh, let's begin by analyzing the qualities of likability. A likable character has similar qualities to a real-life likable person, and these qualities can primarily be identified as the following. He is approachable, someone the reader can understand and come to know. Uh, I'm just going to read the bullet, the, the actual bullet face. I'm not going to read the um, paragraphs that go with just so you can kind of see an, a, a sense of what she's doing here. Uh, he is flawed and human. He has mostly redeeming qualities and positive dominant traits. He somehow instills hope and belief in the reader so the reader can take on his cause and goals. Uh, he has certain toughness and courage. And then, um, I think is this the next one? Okay, so when it comes to unlikable characters, on the other hand, I believe that although we can sometimes understand their emotions and mindset, we cannot ever imagine them, imagine being them. Here are the typical qualities of an unlikable protagonist. So, this is important because you don't want your, um, you, you, if you have to have an unlikable protagonist, you don't want your reader to be turned off from the book itself because you're trying to make a, an unlikable character tolerable. So these are some of the things that you can look out for. He has mostly negative dominant traits. Uh, he creates pain for other characters, especially vulnerable characters. Um, here's a, just, I'll, I'll read one snippet here. His actions based on his primary traits uh, and usually somehow linked to his backstory always cause large ramifications in the story when vulnerability exists in characters the reader tunes in. So that's um, that's one example of what she does when she clarifies the bullet points. So um, he is his own worst enemy even though he usually doesn't possess the insight to understand this. He creates uncomfortable feelings in the reader. He draws in the reader. That, that's important because if you don't draw in your reader you have no book. Um, so I'll clarify that too according to the book. While the reader might not identify with unlikable protagonists, he also cannot turn away when the character is on the screen or page. The reasons we read about unlikable characters are complicated. Mostly it's because on some level we're all voyeurs, insatiably curious about how other people live their lives, even when these people exist within the pages of a book. Um, sounds like she's saying we're sadistic as readers, but I don't know if she's actually saying that. But she might be. Um, but you can see how you know, even if you have a character that, that might be um, hard to approach, there's still ways to make him approachable. And that's so it's going through some of the list there of ways to which to handle that. Uh, he has complicated reasons for his actions and personality traits. Um, yeah, and she mentions one of the books I just mentioned before on here. Um, and uh, she'll go into like sections like uh, the reasons for using an unlikable protagonist. So if you're not even sure why you should create a character like that, I mean, she'll help you out on here. So it's a really easy book to get through. Um, I actually, this is one of the books that I had started 
Uh, I was on shift at uh, my job and I had a lot of downtime. So I had the book with me. Uh, that's one thing I, in my job that I have is when there's not a lot to do, um, you read because you know, I'm, I'm there to help with writing. So I can also just be there as a reader too. Um, but I brought this book with me to read and I think it was in a season where we were actually ex a little extra busy. So I didn't finish it there and then I just, I kind of lost track of it. And so I picked it up really um, for the season. I started back from the beginning and I just, I found it was really easy to get into. Um, I think she's a great writer. She's, um, she, she really dispels any myth about uh, villains that you might have. Although I think by now, if you've been studying characters enough or even story telling enough, you should, or even watched a good movie like um, Avengers with Thanos um, or Hans Gruber from Die Hard or whoever, um, or even like Snape from Harry Potter, who's not a villain, but he's not a likable guy at all. Um, there's, uh, you know, you can learn a lot from analyzing these stories and what makes them work, but I think she does a great job of just putting on the page why, why, um, why we can write these characters, why, how we can succeed in, in writing them well, and how to make them uh, worth the, the attention in your story. Because if we've learned anything else from a Marvel movie, it's, you know, a villain can make or break the story, and... You know, they've been getting it right lately, but they didn't start off getting it right. I mean, they had some generic villains in there. Um, and at some point, you know, you really feel like you're just... The story really has to hinge on liking the main hero because the adversaries are not great. Um, but once they became great, you know, they really made for a compelling story. And that's why I think movies like Die Hard are such classics. Um, you know, John McClane, you know, John McClane's an anti-hero. Uh, call him what you... He's a hero, sure, but... He's he's a hero by by anti-hero standards, um, especially as the series goes on. But you know he's one of the most reluctant heroes we have in cinema. That's actually worth the sequels, even though I, the sequels weren't that great. Um, well, a couple of them were, but the um, yeah he his character works because his uh, character is interesting, and you know he's a kind of a schlub who um, he doesn't even. You know, work in the city where he's being called to action, which is interesting in of itself. He's, you know, he's on the verge of losing his wife. He's there basically to save his marriage, or at least, you know, not to let it um, crumble. And, uh, you know, this whole thing happens in this tower. It ultimately heals his marriage, at least temporarily. I mean, if you've seen the sequels, you know it's temporary. But, um, you know, for that story, it works. But the villain, the villain really makes it, you know, makes him look good. Um, you know, I think one of the reasons why even like in acting, um, Alan Rickman, man, he was, he was a great actor. Um, and that was his first movie too. So I mean, he nailed his first role and, um, anything he does, like he just, he brings this, this gravitas even to his bad guys. I mean, again, talk about Snape, he, same guy who plays Snape. Um, so when you're writing fiction, you know, you're not going to have the benefit of the actor helping you out, but you still visualize what the actor might do. Um, that's some one uh, tactic you might use in order to approach your storyline. But um, but just knowing what your hero wants, or your anti-hero, or your um, your unlikable hero, or your villain. Uh, you know, having having the ability to understand motivation from all angles, I think, really helps you solve the story. But then finding the things that makes them interesting makes the readers want to um, root for them. Uh, even root for the villain, Darth Vader, you know, how many people root for Darth Vader? Probably more than it's comfortable to admit, right? Um, because he's just a really interesting uh, villain, especially if you don't see the prequels. So um, that's the thing is, is you can learn a lot from this book, learn a lot from the ideas that it presents. Um, and it's the only book I know of that focuses entirely on anti-heroes and the, um, the bullies and all of that of fiction. So if you uh, if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of character design uh, for all your characters, not just your heroes, or not just your your safe heroes, um, not just your John Wayne's and your uh, although I, I think nowadays he's uh, not considered a, a worthy hero anymore. But Clint Eastwood, um, no, that's another one. Clint, well, for different reasons, he's uh, Clint Eastwood's just a, a gruff guy. Um, like Dirty Harry, and, and so that's not a good example either. Uh, who am I trying to think of? Who's the, is it Gregory Peck? Is it 
is that who I'm thinking of? I'm thinking anyway. There's there's people out there who embody the the squeaky clean hero. Uh, James Bond might well even James Bond. He's got his dark side. Um, actually, you know what? That that brings up an interesting question. Do we actually have more anti-heroes than we realize? We have more heroes that need um, the components of the anti-hero in order to really be compelling. Maybe so. Maybe that's why I can't think of any good heroes um, outside of um, the uh, the nice squeaky clean ones. Uh, because I think maybe that's the point. Is we don't want the squeaky clean hero. We want somebody who's flawed. We want somebody who might even have more flaws. Um, but you really, I think, even if you don't write one of these anti-heroes as represented in the book, I think the principles that it establishes can still make your, your clean hero more interesting. If you adopt even just one tick, just even one issue that, you know, doesn't make him perfect because readers don't want perfect they they don't want they can't identify with perfect nobody can identify with perfect this is why like even in, in relationships you know you talk about if you know the perfect woman or the perfect man you're not going to find that why are you looking for it and even if you if you miraculously found that and even if if you manage to win that you're going to hate yourself because you know you can't measure up you know that you know if you find if you're a guy looking for the perfect woman and you find her and she's like all in you, you're going to be miserable because you know you can't measure up to what she wants. And so you're going to feel in inferior all the way. Good news is no one's perfect. Good news is, you know, perfect person doesn't exist. There's going to be flaws. Um, and those flaws can show up in our characters in our books. And this, this book will help you to identify what that is. But it's important to remember that, you know, if you're trying to get your reader to care about your, your characters, then you have to inject those flaws. You have to inject those things that make them um, either hard to like or hard to love, at least, um, that make them question uh, why they do what they do to in a point that makes sense in their character. And that's the other thing is you don't want to make a character bad for the sake of being bad. Like, there still needs to be a good reason for it. But, like, if you're doing a Western, for example, you know, Westerns thrive on the anti-hero. That's why I, I was thinking, like, why am I using John Wayne and Clint Eastwood as examples? They have they're, they're in the industry of the antihero, so that doesn't work. But um, the uh, in order to have those components that make them shine as that character type, uh, you certainly want to get into the practice of adding that to your stories. And so, learning how to do that, I think, is the beneficial. And because this book is pretty easy to follow along, and it's it's I mean, it's not it's what two hundred. It's another long one. It's like the last one I just covered. It's it's almost 300 pages, and 300 tall pages. So I mean, <laughs> 300 of these. But um, so it's not something you're gonna get through overnight. But um, but just the contents in there. Again, I don't think there's any other book that I know of that's really like this. So I do think it's an essential add to your library if you're trying to have a, a good solid reference shelf for your writing. This is one I think you need to add. Like you know, go just once you. In the video, go to Amazon or BarnesNoble.com. Find the book. It's Jessica Page Morrell is the author. Um, and I think she has another book out there that's worth getting, although I haven't checked it out myself. But um, she, I, li I like her because she doesn't hold back. She's not, I mean, you can tell by her title, she's not trying to hold you, or she's not trying to comfort you. She's not trying to um, make you um, um, happy. Happy. I don't know. She's not, she's not trying to codify you. She's she's give, she's telling you the truth. Is what she's doing. Um, she's she's giving you an opportunity to see all character types, you know, warts and all, in a way that still works for your story. And if that means anything to you at all, then I think you'll get the book. You now, will you read it in public? I doubt it, because again, if you're if you blush at the sound of any curse word, you're not going to want to be seen with this book. But you know, you I'm sure you have your private library space. Um, sit down somewhere, you know, find a little corner where, you know, you have the lights down, you know, have a little bag over your cover. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Most people don't care. <laughs> I think I'm the only prude in the room, but, uh, yeah, it, you're, you know, it's, it's worth reading and definitely give it a shot. I do think you'll be happy with the end result, um, especially if you're writing, uh, that kind of fiction and why shouldn't you be? It's, it, you know, that's where a lot of the most interesting characters come from is in from those kind of gray areas and even those uh, those dark alleys. So, you know, invite it in, bring, you know, um, well, don't invite it into you, but invite it into your story because that's, um, you know, it makes your story that much better, I think. 
and I know that's something that um, my, my the computer that I, I, I keep talking about because you know, I you know I'd like y'all to read it it's pretty good I think um, it has those types of characters in there I mean I don't think any of the characters are likable the the, the wife maybe a little bit but um, the villains for sure you know he's interesting but man don't be don't be stuck alone with him and then even the hero heroes uh, <laughs> heroes got issues. <laughs> The hero's got a lot of issues. You know, you may not notice right away, but as you read on, um, and I'm not again. This is the, the not the superhero anthology. This is uh, even though he's got issues too. The computer nerd's my thriller about it's um, dysfunctional married couple who um, they reunite after she escapes from a mental hospital. Um, you know, re reunite and when he doesn't want to reunite. So interesting that any interesting things happen there. Uh, there's a, a villain in there too that really complicates the story. Um, but I mean, all the characters. I mean, they fit these tropes. They they are hard to um, to I, not like, but they're they're you can't really see the the squeaky clean in them. They they have issues, but that's what makes them interesting. I think. You now you may disagree, and, and uh, I always welcome comments on uh, my writings. I, I do want to know what people think of my work, and a part of you know just I'm kind of going on a tangent a little bit here. Part of why I do this series is because I, I do want to talk to you guys. If you're watching this, if you're still watching the video at this point, you're clearly a writer wanting to learn more about how to improve your craft. I also think we can learn from each other. Um, I think we have the ability to identify our mistakes, to point them out to each other, and to hopefully become better writers just from the feedback that we all give each other. So I do hope that when you watch these videos, you'll, you'll leave comments. Um, leave links to your own or not maybe not links but leave um comments about your own book that you're working on talk about your book i i welcome it on my channel talk about your book what are you writing what do you what um what are you struggling with what, what's your challenge when you're when you're putting these books together what do you wish uh your readers would tell you um and if you're not published yet you know are you i'm sure you're still printing out sheets of paper for people to read Talk about it. You know what? What can you do to to get better at your craft? Um, you know, we certainly want this channel to be an open place for you to have those discussions. So I'm going to talk about my book. You should talk about yours. So um, I do welcome that. Um, but um, I think we do get better just by adding the principles that we learn from these books. And I, we may not use everything. There's going to come to a point where it's going to be saturation, and that's where we're going to be like overwhelmed. But until we hit there, I mean, just keep learning. So, anyway, that's uh, this week's book. Again, Bullies and then Bleep and Bleep by Jessica Pillage Morrell. Um, it's uh, how to write the bad guys in fiction. I do hope you get it. Uh, it's an older book, so you will have to probably get it online, but I think it's worth the space on your shelf um, because it is unique. And I, I hope that Writer's Digest updates it or, get, or brings us something new um, in the space because I think we've had so many books that are you know bordering on redundant and so when we have these few gems um it's nice to know that we can have updates to these ideas maybe there's a new thing in fiction that uh, uh writers are trying out that maybe uh these older books don't cover It'd be nice to see them you know actually address it so um if you're one of our uh, uh writers that i'm covering and you're looking for an idea for a new book there's one right there i mean update update the villain book you know give us one on um you know, not just compelling anti um, but uh, just compelling characters in general that you know, we can follow along and root for, but may not necessarily be you know, nice guys. So uh, it's an interesting topic, I think. But anyway, that's all for today. Uh, come back next week. We're going to do, uh, a, a, it's not a hard book, but it's an interesting book and one that you'll definitely want if you take characters seriously. Um, so come back for that, and I'll, I have an interesting story to tell you um, if I remember to share it. Uh, in that space, but um, that'll be next week. But uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the things that YouTubers tell you to do. Uh, check out the Computer Nerd um, somewhere online. Hopefully, I hopefully I didn't. Uh, you know what? Maybe <laughs> I don't know if I should be promoting it. I don't know how the paperback's going to look right now. I'm still waiting to get my sample copy to make sure because I I've recently revised it to. Um, I didn't like how the old one looked. I thought it was too dark. Um, like the the um, the ink didn't print right and. I just, I, you know, not to mention, like, I've had revisions in my ebook that weren't compatible with the paperback. So I, I redid everything. So as of now, um, it's all online. The, the, I, it should be the final revision or at least final 
uh, major revision. Um, anything I do from here on out might be like changing words or, or grammar or something if I find an error. Um, but I don't think I'm going to be changing the story anymore, not until I do the series reboot, which in that case will be different entirely, but that's probably another couple years down the road. But um, if you get it, you know, give me feedback. Tell me if you like it. Tell me if you don't like it. Tell me why. Uh, but tell me if you if you like it, tell me why you like it. Because that's the one thing none of my reviewers tell me why they like it. They just they either tell me why they don't like it, which, you know, for come up with reasons why I don't even understand. Because it doesn't I feel like the book doesn't contain that or whatever. And then uh, and then the, the ones that rate well, they don't talk. So I don't really know. Um, but again, help each other help let's help each other out. Um, anyway. Alright, I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.